Patriots are screwed now with Brady. Good. Good. Now, like I said, I'm not a big sports fan, but this is written by one Mr. John Boyce. And John Boyce's sports documentaries on YouTube are phenomenal to watch. They highlight very specific moments in sports history that are that are mind blowing enough that anybody anybody not even even non sports fans and non sports followers like myself can understand right so i'm going to read the introduction here now this must be emphasized from the on, from the outset the bill belichick offseason simulator is a tool and not a toy it does not exist to amuse you it is meant to train prospective football coaches in the art and science of managing the travails of the offseason. Any fun you may have, any amusement you may find, while piloting the simulator is purely accidental and should be reported as a software bug. This video game, if you would like to call it that, is not about fun and games. It is about getting dressed, resetting the clock on your car radio, shopping at the hardware store, and accomplishing off-season tasks. In other words, it is the exact sort of game that Bill Belichick might himself make. This game is possible to beat, but you may find it frustrating and difficult at times. That is because you are not Bill Belichick. Best of luck piloting the Bill Belichick off-season simulator. Due to its immersive realism and state-of-the-art graphics, the simulator might take a few moments to load. Do not abuse or enjoy the Bill Belichick off-season simulator. Okay. Welcome to the Bill Belichick off-season simulator. Brought to you by SB Nation. You are a person playing the Bill Belichick off-season simulator. Who is simulating an off-season day in the life of Bill Belichick. Coach of the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick, weeks removed from his fourth Super Bowl win, finds himself in the guts of the offseason. He must complete offseason tasks. He must also find meaning in a life without football. Your goal is to guide Bill to a greater understanding of purpose and of self. The simulation will end if it's detected that you are not living true to the principles of the Bill Belichick system. So, I'm gonna go ahead and play. Yeah, uh, yeah, anything could happen. As a Pennsylvanian, I know the Steelers aren't doing too hot. Nah. Even I know that. <laughs> I'm gonna begin. All is dark. It is 4 a.m. It is time to get up. Am I gonna get up? Or am I gonna sleep in? I'm gonna sleep in. It's 4 a.m. And I'm not Bill Belichick. You allow yourself to sleep in. You experience a dream. A man walking down a corridor. You love corridors. Is it you? You cannot be sure. The silhouette appears to be wearing a hoodie, and yet, and yet his sleeves flop at the elbows, liberated. It is a short sleeved hoodie. It provides warmth while leaving one's wrists and forearms unbothered so that they may be at greater liberty to draw plays or make notes about football, or point at football players, or, indeed, to pull on or off the hoodie itself. It is the most beautiful garment you have ever seen. It is regal, and beautiful, and utilitarian, which are different words for the same thing. Perhaps one day, you will make enough of yourself in this world to achieve such a garment. It's time to get up. It's time to get up from this dream. All right, you rock yourself forward and backward until your Murphy bed gains enough momentum to swing to the floor with a crash. So that's what that bed is. That's a Murphy bed. Okay, good morning, Bill. Playbook element unlocked. Congratulations. By accomplishing a task, you have earned a playbook element. Playbook Tucson 18, 14 across, 13 down. I have no idea what this means. <laughs> I may want to write this down. This is one of seven playbook elements scattered throughout the Bill Belichick offseason simulator. 
These will be necessary should I wish to fully implement the Bill Belichick system. So I have not played this game in full, right? But I'm going to take the advice here and I will actually jot this down in notepad. Okay. Your sleeping arrangement is a monument to efficiency. You call it your bill bed. Look upon how much floor space you have saved. These are the things that make you happy. In fact, it might be time to sing a song. No one will hear you. Why not sing the special bill bed song? It's time to sing the very special bill bed song. It's the bill bed. My name is Bill. Will you sing with me? Well, I hope that you will. Sing the song with me. I'm not singing this song, y'all. I'm getting out of bed. Okay, it's time to get dressed. I see I have a score of 12. And it looks like... Looks like I'm near a ball pit. With signs that say no running and no talking. You are in the pool closet. This is where you'll get dressed. It is the intersection of efficiency and style. Your first order of business upon purchasing this home was to have the pool drained because most calculator watches do not operate underwater. I have a calculator watch. Hell yeah. Uh, your second order of business was to visit clothing.com and click arbitrarily until a dump truck of miscellaneous clothing arrived at your door and poured it into your pool. Hoodies, socks, underwear, hoodies, neckties, a third rock from the sun poncho, Dora the Explorer sandals, size 9.5. Khakis with AutoZone printed down the pant legs. I kind of kind of want to see what that looks like. A, a Wedding Crasher ski mask. A Ballistic X vs. Sever shower curtain. H holy crap, I haven't heard of that movie in a while. Uh, I know, that's got a GBA game too. I need to... Anyway, Home Time Mittens. Your objective at this juncture is to swim in your pool of clothing until enough clothing units catch on one of your limbs or wrap around your person such that you will be able to venture outside without worry of ticketing or arrest. Please, select a stroke. Okay, so... Alright, so what is what, what is the Bill Belichick stroke? What is the manliest of strokes here? Because I think that's what they're going for. Uh, the doggy paddle seems a bit too juvenile. The backstroke? I don't know. How about breaststroke? I think, I think breaststroke sounds like the most complex kind of... Uh, kind of swimming maneuver looks like the perfect morning for a breast stroke cap'n may the polyesters deep smile kindly on us today hell yeah success a hooded sweatshirt size xxl has found its way onto your person miraculously some pants have neatly pulled themselves over your legs and two almost matching shoes are hooked neatly over your feet it is now time for you to begin your day in earnest bill we're going to the office. Welcome to your office. It has been decorated just how you like it. Time to get to work. All right. Do I want to start by drawing up the offensive pale playbook, address my roster needs, hire my intern? Do I want to be sure to sing Bill's very special computer song first? I'm going to take a fifth option, actually, and edit my stream info. <laughs> I'm going to... Address my roster needs. Let's do that. You didn't sing the very special computer. Oh, no. What? It would have been so simple to sing the very special computer song. You have failed to abide by the principles of the Bill Belichick's... For real. I lost. I lost. Uh, why are my eyes wide shut? Fixed again. I did it. So we're not like Bill. We're not like Bill. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, my score is two. I didn't bust any unions. I didn't discover any monorails. I didn't destroy any mystical totems. Okay, uh, we're gonna do that again. We're gonna run that back. Begin. Get up. We getting up. Alright. Saved that. The Bill bed song. I did that. Got out of bed. Breast stroke. Go to the office. Okay. I gotta I gotta sing the song. Now that you've turned on your computer, it's time to sing the very special computer song. Oh god. Uh 
All my life I have longed to be a human being with my own PC. It accepts CD-ROM 3.5 and 5.25 diskettes, and is thereby nicknamed the Triple Threat. On the front of the tower, there's an LED that displays the megahertz for me. It's always stuck at 133. Salvation is found through Atherby. The monitor's VGA. I degauss it most every day to get rid of all the spam. Sometimes for a special treat, I'll treat it to sepia. It's really neat. There should only be two colors. Humans should not hug each other. Hooray. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and address roster needs. Your top priority for this offseason is to acquire a new slot receiver. It's important to complete this task in a manner consistent with the Bill Belichick system. Uh, use a draft pick, trade for a slot receiver, sign a slot receiver in free agency. Build my own slot, hell yeah. Crafting a receiver is the most consistent with the Bill Belichick system. After all, you found Wes Walker in a pile of leaves, and you built Julian Edelman with a pottery wheel. In order to craft your own wide receiver, you'll need to acquire three components. The first component is a sprig of Nernroot. What is Nernroot? Is Nernroot some sort of video game thing? Whatever. Wander the countryside in search of Nernroot. I've encountered a rock music gang. Negative 81 points. Sweet. Uh, you remember hearing tales of the dangerous rock music gangs from your childhood. On one occasion in 2005, you accidentally unmuted your television during a football broadcast and heard several seconds of a song by Billy Joel, a notable rock music gang. Now you're at their feet. They tower over you with their music mohawks and rap guitar. Oh, wow. You are terrified. Do I attack, or do I attempt to initiate jam session? Well, let's jam on. Yo, old man, what's the haps? You appear to be a mondo cool dude. Are you down to clown? Would you like to conduct a jam sesh with us? Afterwards, we can agree upon a spot to hang out and have candy and cola, said the cops. <laughs> what is candy? Their vernacular is unfamiliar and dizzying. Nonetheless, you are committed to playing music consistent with the Bill Belichick system. You are a virtuoso mu musician. Please select an instrument to play. Okay, three ring binder, vocals and mosh. Um, I think Bill, I think he's more of a binder guy. Let, let's go with the binders. Okay, you open your satchel full of items which you have had all along, and retrieve one of the cornerstones of the, of the Bill Belichick system. Your three-ring binder full of play diagrams and teen documents. You find it is an instrument of surprising versatility. For example, you may use the thumb levers at the top and bottom of the mechanism to click the rings open. Or, perhaps, you might simply pull the rings apart directly. Similarly, you find that different pitches of click can be achieved if some of the whole punched pages are added and removed. When the rings are full of pages, they clack together with a dull smack. And if they are empty, the click is sharper and more metallic. You have never had such fun. You play for hours, lost in a jam session, unlike anything the rock gang music rap world has ever seen. Oh wow. And then you look up. The rock music gang has fled. You are granted safe passage. Is that Al? Yeah, that was Al. Yo, that was Al. <laughs> uh, proceed. Oh my god. Uh, the rock music gang has abandoned a sprig of Nernroot. I have a slot receiver, a sword of Aragon, and a Nernroot gun. Uh, well, no, no, this is a crafting component of those. Okay, uh, briefcase, map of Valeria, Goomba shoe, battle mech, longest ro What? What? And I have a, I have a SimCity power plant. Okay. This is one of the three items that you will need in order to craft a slot receiver. Okay. This is a tenant of the Bill Belichick system. You ought never trade for a receiver, nor should you spend draft picks or any other resources on him. You must build him yourself out of crafting items. What the hell is Nernroot? Okay, I am going to add that to the playbook. Roswell, 68, 9 across, 20 down. Uh, 
let me uh let me let me fix my face here okay next crafting item the second crafting component necessary to craft a wide receiver is active dry yeast you will need to take a trip to the grocery store upon entering your car you find you find that this dashboard clock is one hour too slow. Uh, yeah, that happened to me last week, daylight savings time, or rather, uh, daylight standard time. Uh, it appears to have not automatically adjusted between standard time and daylight savings time. Operating this motor vehicle without ensuring that all its systems are properly calibrated would stand a direct violation of the Bill Belichick system. You must operate the car radio's clock interface until it displays the correct time. Well, let's see here. Okay, good deal. Let's see if I uh, cassette. Looks like we are. Looks like we're. Like looks like it's in cassette mode. Not sure how to get out of cassette mode. We're trying to get to the clock mode. Okay. Um. Try and get it back into clock mode. See if you can push it again to get back into clock mode. It might be a cycle through kind of deal. Try hitting it a few times to see if it cycles from cassette mode back to clock mode. Hit the uh, see if there's a power button. Okay. Um. It might be a, a cycle through kind of thing. I'm going to try that. Well, it's uh, still stuck in cassette mode. And what you got to do is uh, exactly, exactly. You got to gotta, gotta get it back into clock mode. Um, oh, hey, there's the cassette tape. Oh, see, there you go. You got it back into clock mode. Okay, so I guess what you do now is you get, get it to the mode that lets you change the time. See if you can't find time change mode. Try and hold one of the buttons. Oh my god. <laughs> this simulates uh, using an old an old deck uh, very well. Try and hold down one of the buttons. Sometimes there are clocks that work like that. Fool with the dial up in the corner there. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Uh, try hitting a few of the buttons until it blinks or gives you a sign. Okay. Um, I'm going to try hitting a few of the buttons. Okay, you're getting hell yeah. Okay, uh, okay. The trick now is you can't get it to stop at the right place. If you hit eleven, that's great, but if you miss it when you cycle around, it puts you all the way back back at one, and you have to go all the way back again. Uh, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna go slower so that I can stop it better. Well, it looks like see see now it looks like you got to change in the minute part of it. The minute part was fine. There's just got to be some kind of way to get back to the... Oh, crap. Uh, okay, let's see if maybe one of the buttons means something else now. Like, maybe the button that says scan means change back to hours. Or I, I, I know that. I, I mean, I, I've seen that happen before, but... Uh, how about set the clock to the proper time? Can I do that? Can I just do that? I did it! I, ju I just did it! I just straight up did it! Okay, I got yeast... How did I get the yeast from the... Whatever. Whatever. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can craft a Mark Emmert. <laughs> okay, uh, it is now time to acquire the third and final component necessary to craft a slot receiver. Am I... Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, hold up. Time to... Let me, let me write that down. Okay. Okay, one more component. One more component. We can do this. We can do this. The final crafting component requires that I assemble a slot receiver. Okay. Now, the final crafting component I require to assemble a slot receiver is a doorknob. I must go to Hardware Barn to acquire a doorknob. Look at that gif. I love that gif. You hate shopping. You hate going to stores. They are not football. They are full of things that are not football. Walk inside or speak to the enterprising gentleman in the parking lot. I think the Bill Belichick system does not involve me speaking to random people in a parking lot, so I'm just going to walk inside. I am standing in front of aisle one. Uh, okay. I'm looking for a doorknob. This does not... These look like light fixtures and not doorknobs. Let's check out aisle two. I'm taking a look at aisle two... I cannot discern what the hell's here. Uh, what does aisle three look like? 
Uh, I'm standing in front of aisle three. It looks like a bunch of fixtures again. Aisle four, cleaning materials. Aisle five, um, I can't quite. And you know, they really should make things easier to find around here. True. Aisle six, uh, you're standing in front of aisle six and you know, you'd think that when they were designing the store, they'd make stuff easier to locate. Aisle seven, you're standing in front of aisle seven. And you know, how are you supposed to know where to go if the contents of the aisle aren't on the sign? At least the grocery store, they have, I don't know, bananas on the sign or bread. So at least you know kind of a summary of what kind of stuff the aisle is going to have. Uh, okay, so aisle eight. You are standing in front of aisle eight. And you know, why do the stores have to be this big? They used to be this smaller, you know? Uh, so you could get in and out without being this big whole deal. Aisle nine. You are standing in front of aisle nine. Aisle 10, you're standing in front of aisle 10, you're getting pretty tired of this crap. Aisle 11, and what reason does a store have to be so big and crowded and full of stuff? Yes, I know, Home Depot is trash. Uh, well, I guess it's because, you know, of course it's crowded, of course it's going to be crowded. They, they'll they need a lot of space and merchandise to meet demand. But still, this is just for the birds. Aisle 12, you are standing in front of aisle 12. It's just for the birds. Aisle 13. Oh, shit. Uh, you are standing in front of aisle 13. <laughs> aisle 13 appears to be a Yeti's lair. Oh, hell, I'll just go down the Yeti's lair. You walk into the Yeti's lair, where there is... Oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> you have been captured by the Yeti. Venturing into the Yeti's la yeah, lair is entirely inconsistent with the Bill Belichick system. Bill Belichick has almost certainly never been considered wandering. Never even considered wandering into a Yeti's lair. It's difficult to understand your thought process here. You weren't tricked into entering the Yeti's lair. I mean, it was what it said on the tin. Yeti's lair. Was it not explicitly stated? Are you intentionally trying to operate this simulator in a manner you ought not have operated? The Bill Belichick offseason simulator is a tool and not a toy. Or perhaps you're just a nitwit. Okay, uh, scores at 550. I have not adopted any pantheons or built any settlements. But you know what? I don't feel like I deserve to be talked to this way. You're right. You're right. Sorry, let me introduce myself. This is John, the creator of this simulator. Now, as such, I might have certain feelings about how you should operate this simulator. If I want to be in charge of the whole show, I ought to write a book. And nobody ought to read one of those, much less write one. For a moment, I allowed my feelings to get in the way of my respect for you, the operator of this simulator. I called you a nitwit. That was absolutely unacceptable language and sentiment on my part. I would like to offer a humble apology. You do the Bill Belichick off-season simulator honor merely by operating it, and you ought to simulate it however you please. I'd like to make it up to you, if that's even possible at this point. I'll give you three choices. You may start this simulator over from the beginning, or I could bring you to aisle 14 of the hardware barn and allow you to resume your quest. Or I can allow you to warp to the very end of the simulator, thereby skipping hours, hundreds of hours, in gameplay. I'm hesitant to do this, but after all, grand trespasses call for grand gestures please accept one of these albums as a token of my remorse and recommitment to treating you the simulation operator with respect you know what you know what i'm a winner take me to the end what the hell uh december 9th 4853 you have dropped off Ensign McKee at the nearest atoll for, fa uh, for failing to properly seal the tins of potted potatoes. This vessel must not carry dead weight. Nevertheless, it's an atoll. Atoll? I'm going to find out how to pronounce that. You have visited many times through the centuries, and one you know to sustain berries and fauna. How the hell do they get to this point? May the stars watch over him. Inventory update. Ship to disposal 682. Total tonnage, 19,886 tons. Hands aboard, 11,201. Firepower, 1,220 cannons. The winter winds that shape your skin are the same that fill your sails. Every sword in this age, it seems, is double-edged. 
2,800 years at sea, and your conquest of the Atlantic is nearly complete. If you can, at least at long last, defeat the final surviving ships of the dreaded Pendleton, you will secure absolute victory. Let's view the map. Oh, oh wow. Uh, as you can see, your 682 vessels of war not only greatly outnumber the dreaded Pendleton's 58 ships, but you also have the opportunity to create a blockade. In other words, completely surround him with your armada. Creating a blockade will reduce the Dreaded Pendleton's firepower by 50%, offering you a considerable bonus. However, to do so, you will have to move one of your vulnerable units into an attackable position. Your first option is to move your fleet of 34 ships due south like so. Hmm. The drawback, of course, is that the fleet of 34 ships is now the weakest link of the chain. It is outnumbered by the Dreaded Pendleton's fleet by 24 ships. Your blockade bonus might not be enough to overcome the disparity. Your second option is to move two fleets, those of 99 ships and 65 ships due north. In terms of sheer numbers, your fleets are large enough to repel any attack from the Dreaded Pendleton. However, as noted, 45 ships of the fleet of 99 are damaged and are in need of repair. These ships are too vulnerable to be left alone and will significantly slow down the healthy remainder of the fleet. This could present a window of time through which the Dreaded Pendleton can escape. First of all, worst of all, the fleet of the Dreaded Pendleton is famously swift. It has taken you centuries to whittle down her numbers and trap what remains of her fleet into a blockade. Allow her to escape now, and Asia's conquest will be for naught. You are likely never to see her again. That is, is tough. I think it might be harder to coordinate the movement of two fleets into into this space here than to sacrifice a fleet of 34. And I think that was the implication. Like, if I move this fleet of 34 ships... Uh, okay, they're outnumbered by 24 ships... The blockade bonus might not be enough to, to overcome the disparity. I'm not quite sure what the rules of this potential simulator, <laughs> this potential war game are. But I think, well, no. Uh, if I move this down, right? If I move this fleet down and they get bodied, uh, we can. I, I still, I could still flank them with the other ships, with the other armadas. I'm going to move that fleet south. Thanks to your cunning naval tactics, you have at long last captured the dreaded Pendleton. And after more Atlantic Ocean conquered, and after more than 2,000 years of seafaring, you now hold dominion over all the oceans of the Earth. It has been a long journey for you and Bill alike. Unless you cheated or somehow skipped ahead, you have likely invested a minimum of 750 hours playing the game. Congratulations are due for piloting the Bill Belichick off-season simulator to its successful conclusion. You have finished 100% of the game, completed every side quest, unless it bears repeating, you have cheated. Don't worry about that. It is time for you to survey all you've conquered. The video is private, so let me actually pull that up. Is it? Is it? Is it even up anymore? It's unavailable. Oh no... Oh, no. Uh, so, yeah, that was the Bill Belichick simulator. I, I could play it some more, but I'm not I'm not going back to... Um, I'm not going back to bootleg Home Depot. <laughs> nah, that is fun. That, that, was, that was a fun piece. I highly recommend people play that and not cheat like I did. But you know what? I was uh, grievously offended. And only cheating could make it right. Ha, 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 ha.